this is Bupendra from LinkedIn and I'm the technical lead for the offline data compliance from LinkedIn Bangalore. Along with me today, my colleague Somia, who is a senior developer for the uh, data division in the compliance area, will join me in today's discussion. So in today's presentation, uh, we will talk about the various data deletion practices which we have implemented during the GDPR time and the reference architecture and the learnings related to that. So let's begin. Here is a quick agenda which we will cover today. So first we will define uh, what is the right to erasure meaning uh, and what, what it means for LinkedIn. Then we will also look at the overall LinkedIn's data ecosystem architecture and how the data is flowing from the online world to the offline world and the various other places. We will also touch upon the data scale part. We will also see uh, how what all the key technologies and the technology tech stack which we have used for the overall data deletion uh, architecture. Uh, then we will talk about the offline data deletion uh, architecture and how the, all these technologies together is you know uh, helping us to realize the overall right to erasure uh, problem. We will touch upon the some of the interesting use cases around the read time filtering. And then at the end, we will uh, talk about some of the key challenges and the monitoring aspects related to right to erasure. So what is right to erasure? So right to erasure uh, in terms of the GDPR as a legal definition, it gives a privilege for the user uh, to say, delete all my data. So it's like delete all my personal data with their, without undue delay when it is no longer necessary or when the consent has been withdrawn, right? So this is the legal definition when it comes to the engineering. So that meaning we need an ability to delete some specific subset of the data or delete all the data when it is no longer needed, right? So for an example, in terms of the LinkedIn, uh, one of the use case for right to erasure is when LinkedIn member closes the LinkedIn account, all the members related data has to be deleted within 30 days of the time. So that's the one of the use case which uh, LinkedIn has defined and the promise which user, uh, LinkedIn is giving to all its members. So to this presentation, we will talk with respect to uh, that particular use case. Now let's look at the overall uh, LinkedIn data ecosystem. So this is a reference uh, image which shows how the data is flowing across uh, uh, various online services and offline services. So let me explain that. So uh, when a LinkedIn member from his mobile app, LinkedIn app, or from the desktop like LinkedIn.com is navigating to the LinkedIn website and the app and doing various sort of an activities. It may be changing the LinkedIn, uh, his own personal data. It may be changing the preferences. It may be sharing some content, liking some content, and many other activities which you can do on the LinkedIn uh, platform. All these activities will internally generate various amount of data, which is captured by the online services. Now, uh, when the online services captures the data, it has two, two kinds of uh, I mean, various mechanisms to capture it in online stores, uh, wherein we use some of the online stores as an Espresso, which is a uh, document store. We have the MySQL, Oracle, capturing some of the, some of the members data here. And then uh, when the user is navigating across various pages, doing a lot of activities, all this tracking data is also generated in the form of the events. So we do leverage the Kafka technology here and all this tracking data is generated or emitted using the Kafka events. Then there are other set of uh, uh, users, which are LinkedIn employees itself, which are you know, making use of this data. And there are like a lot of internal applications which they are using and generating a lot of uh, other meaningful information or the derived data on top of this data or various other data. So that's like another mechanism. And then there are third party services which will also generate the data and that will also come to the LinkedIn data ecosystem. So now if you see this picture, when all this online data store gets ingested to the offline world, wherein this elephant denotes uh, is denoting the Hadoop world basically. So all these database snapshots are getting ingested every day to the Hadoop. And in terms of the storage, we leverage the HTLS as in storage in on-prem technology. 
So we can see all the uh, database snapshots, every table will be present in the HDFS world. And then based on the base snapshot, there will be a lot of incremental changes like you like the LinkedIn member is updating the preference, deleting some records. So all these things are also captured as an incremental dump or as a change data capture request. And already on top of already ingested database snapshot, all these updates, deletes will be applied. Uh, so this is one mechanism wherein online data is getting coming to the offline world. The other part wherein all the activities, the tracking related events, which is generated in the form of the Kafka events are also getting ingested to the Hadoop world. We use the Goblin as a data ingestion platform to ingest all this data. Now, apart from this, uh, in, the, in the offline world, we also have the data from various other sources, as I mentioned, like the third party, and there will be a lot of de derived data. Uh, when I say derived data, consider an example uh, of uh, LinkedIn recommending the jobs recommendation is there, the people you may know is there. So all these uh, jobs and this, all these recommendations are provided based on the various analytics uh, jobs which are running on top of this Hadoop data. Yeah. So now uh, when all, the, all these jobs are run and then they will also have some meaningful data, which is again stored in various other data stores. Some of them are like a Pino, a Search, the Graph, MySQL database. And that's how uh, finally when a LinkedIn member is navigating to the LinkedIn.com, uh, uh, the user member will see the, the jobs recommendation and other data. Now, when, it, when we talk about the data deletion perspective, uh, when a LinkedIn member is closing the account, the data which is residing in the online store, the data which is in motion or data which is in uh, a near line pipelines or the data which is resting in the Hadoop world, all the data and even the derived data out of that, right? All this data has to be physically deleted within the 30 days. So that is the problem statement uh, uh, which we are referring today. Now, in the uh, offline world, we have the HDFS as in our primary storage, and then we are also moving to the Azure. So, an Azure storage in terms of the ADLS will also uh, will be like another storage where the data will be stored and it has to be deleted. Now, here, uh, yeah, now let's go to the next slide. So, when we see the data scale, so LinkedIn uh, has already seven. 40 million members and it's growing very fast. So as I'm talking, there will be like many more members already onboarded to the LinkedIn.com. Yeah. So now uh, with this many members, we are already at the exabyte scale uh, data, which we are processing today. And then at any point of time, we see uh, it's like a 2.3 trillion messages, which is an estimate number. Uh, that many messages are in motion. I mean, that many records or that many you know, data records are getting processed at any point of time. We already have 10 plus Hadoop clusters. Uh, so this includes the uh, Hadoop cluster in on-prem uh, in various data centers. And this also, in, uh, and then we also have now the Azure uh, data cluster where we are also lending some of the data. So if we see the data in LinkedIn is uh, as the more and more members are onboarding, the data is also growing very fast and that makes the overall data deletion uh, uh, problem as you know, a bit complex. Now let's look at uh, some of the technology stack, like what are the key technologies which we are using and realizing the data deletion uh, uh, problem. So we mostly we use the uh, key open source technologies wherein Goblin provides the ETL infrastructure for us, Data Hub providing the metadata discovery part, DALI being the data abstraction layer and Azkaban playing a key role of managing the flows and scheduling the flows for us. Let's deep dive into uh, all these technologies. Yeah, so Goblin. So Goblin is the uh, recently uh, graduated as a top level Apache project and uh, Goblin is in the distributed data ingestion or data integration platform, which provides the capability to ingest data from various heterogeneous data sources to, uh, to the, you know, you can be able to load it to the various uh, heterogeneous destinations as well. 
So if you look at the goblin architecture and the constructs which it provides, so this is these are the key constructs which are depicted in this picture. And the, the very beginning, the source is the main construct which defines from where the data has to be read. So your source can be a RESTly service, source can be an online database, source can be another Hadoop cluster, or it can be an Azure. Now, after the source is defined, uh, the Goblin provides a way to, to distribute the overall source into various tasks. So when I say task, consider an example, you need to process a terabytes of data and it is across millions of files which you need to process. So you may choose to process every file as in a, as in a separate task. So that is what task meaning in terms of the Goblin and that is defined by a work unit. So now we have the source, we have the various work units, which, uh, which, is, which will be executed in the form of a task in a distributed environment on top of the yarn, which will provide you know, the resource and the compute need. And all these tasks will be uh, executed parallelly. Now, if you look at within the task, within the task, Goblin provides four main constructs. Yeah. So first part is the extractor. So as we have mentioned from the source, now we have the work unit, which is part of the entire source, which we are reading in this particular task. So the extractor job is responsible for the reading the part of the uh, work unit. Next comes the converter. Converter basically provides the transformation capabilities. So uh, uh, it is fully pluggable model, which Goblin provides. So you can actually plug everything, extractor, converter, quality, right? Everything is pluggable. So when I say converter, uh, user has the flexibility to plug their own transformation logic, the filtration logic, and even the schema conversion and many other conversion are possible with the converter uh, construct. Next come the quality constructs because as it's a data ingestion job, so the data quality plays a very significant role. So there are a lot of data validation checks can be done at this step. And uh, uh, it is again a pluggable stuff. User can write their own data validation mechanism, the schema validation mechanism, and then uh, it, uh, you can decide either to uh, write the data or you can filter out the data at the quality step itself. Final step is the write, which will finally load the data to the uh, destination. The destination can be Hadoop or Azure or any other database. Yeah. So by saying that now uh, from the source, all these tasks getting executed in parallel and finally at the data publish step. So this is the step where uh, Goblin, Goblin provides the way to do the state management. So now at the end of the job, you may have to write some watermark information, or some state related information so that the next time when you are again running the same ETL job on the same source, you can resume from where you have left last time. Yeah, so that this is like in a watermark, uh, watermark can be in the form of a timestamp or everything. So now this Goblin oral architecture, which is a distributed ETL architecture, uh, we do leverage this architecture for our data deletion practices. Yeah. So if you see how we are extending it for purge, uh, as I mentioned, the converter step, which is a pluggable step here. So we can write the custom converter here and we have the full flexibility to either uh, filter out the data record, change the data record and then do the further processing. So in the subsequent slide, we will talk about how we are leveraging uh, these capabilities in our overall data deletion architecture. The next key technology is the data hub. So data hub, what is data hub? So data hub is the tool which provides the metadata discovery. So in LinkedIn, all the data sets, which is residing in online world, which is in near line processing world or in the offline world, the metadata of all the data sets is present in the data hub. So this is one place where, you know, user can go and do the data discovery. Where is my data? and find the related data sets. And apart from that, data have also keeps track of the relationship. So it also has the information how the data is flowing. So when, you know, from the online world, uh, the data is getting lended to the offline cluster and from one cluster to another cluster and then various transformation is happening. So data hub keeps a track of all the data set lineage and how the transformation is happening. How one data or one particular uh, column is getting transformed to various other columns and in which form. So this complete data set lineage is provided by the data hub. 
not only that so data hub also provides in compliance annotation so because we need to uh, do the gdpr related data deletion so compliance annotations plays a key role there so data hub also have the uh, information about for every data set what is the uh, what is the pia annotations meaning for every column how we can identify it is in PII data or not. It also has the mechanism to keep the various purge policy in terms of like how this data set has to be purged and a particular purge key means uh, for a particular data set, uh, whether it has to be, you know, what is the key uh, based on that the row can be deleted. So uh, the compliance annotation in data hub is then key information for uh, enabling us for the data deletion uh, with respect to GDPR. Next comes the DALI. DALI stands for Data Access Layer at LinkedIn. And as we know today, there are various you know, file formats, various storage technologies, uh, various table formats available. So for an example, we have the Avro as in file format, ORC, Parquet, and then we also have the data in CSV, TXT, XML, and various other formats. And then on top of that, we have the high resin table format. We have, we are moving towards the iceberg resin table format and various other table formats. And then as I told, we have the federated HDFS layer. We also have data stored in Azure. So there are various storage layers, various file formats, and you know, various table formats available. And then for a user or the job, which is processing, reading and writing the data, it becomes a hard problem if the job uh, has to understand all kinds of formats. So DALI uh, plays a very key role there, which provides an abstraction for all the data read and write. So a uh, user need not worry about what is the underlying format and how what is the table format, where my data is stored. So whenever the data is getting processed, the DALI will provide that abstraction. And we do leverage DALI in our overall architecture. Yeah, Escaban. So it's again an open source Apache Escaban technology, which we are leveraging with, uh, to manage our overall workflows. So when we, when we say the data deletion, uh, there are various kinds of jobs which are running. Some jobs are sequentially running, some jobs are dependent on other jobs. And then there are many flows which, are, uh, which together will make the overall data deletion complete. So for that, this uh, the flow scheduling and getting this flows executed in a distributed way, Escaban uh, plays a key role there. So we use Escaban for the flow scheduling, the flow monitoring, the flow uh, alerts, the SLA part, and you know overall job management. So uh, Escaban also provides the capability for you know enabling us for the real time monitoring if a flow fails or if a particular data set fails. It has a various alerts and events available so that runtime user has the flexibility to either uh, resume the job or I mean you know uh, re redo the entire data deletion. So all this flexibility comes naturally with the Escaban, and then uh, it is a key uh, thing which we are using. Yeah, so this picture is an offline data deletion overall architecture. Uh, and this will talk about how we are leveraging all these technologies together. I let Somya uh, to talk on this. Over to you, Somya. Thanks, Bhupendra. Hello, everyone. So uh, we will check uh, offline data deletion high level design now. Uh, let's talk about all the inputs needed for offline purger to work. The first one is uh, delete requests. So whenever a member ID closes their account, we get a delete request in form of Kafka events, which is then ingested into offline data lake by Goblin job. And then a DALI view is created on top of it. As we saw in earlier slide, DALI view is nothing but an abstraction so that you know, a user cannot access the uh, offline data lake uh, data directly. So this DALI view will act as an input and we'll create a lookup table from it. Lookup table is nothing but uh, it create it actually has all the deleted IDs which uh, we which we can access which we can have a quick access on given a few set of keys input keys. So this is one set of uh, input for offline purchase. The next one is the actual data that that needs to be scanned and make then and that, then we need to make that data compliant, right? So we have data in Azure, we have data in HDFS. 
so we have crawlers running over all the our uh, offline data lakes and we are we, we are given data set summary every day with you know the latest partitions that are available in each of them so the, these are the data sets which offline purger will actually work on so once offline purger it has all these data sets it it goes to the data hub and it gets all the compliance annotations which we talked about earlier let's talk about them in little more detail here so uh, here actually with compliance annotations data set owners actually tell us how they want their data to be you know uh, how they want their data to be purged for example uh, they can mark their uh, purge policy as data restatement which means we'll actually filter out their rows or do column transformation and, and you know take out the confidential part or if uh, let's say it's a test data or they don't need it after some days of creation they might actually want it's easier for them to you know have the the whole data set deleted after 30 days so they mark it as limited retention in some specific cases uh, they might want to do it themselves and they mark it as manual purge but then that is also you know audited and then uh, made uh, compliant so uh, this way they actually tell us how they want their data to be purged so let's say they select data restatement then they have to tell us how each uh, what what each column contains so they actually uh, they do pia annotations for each column there so it tells us whether like what each what id each column is or a set of id each column is then there is the, the third thing purge key here they tell us um, if they want a column transformation for the pia field or they are okay with whole row being deleted so uh, once we have these things we uh, take the lookup table that we had created earlier and we uh, compare uh, the ids and lookup tables in each of the records and then we remove them or we do column transformation as needed but there might be few cases where you know uh, it's uh, the default logic will not work for example uh, if uh, let's say uh, the confidential id is buried deep inside a, a column or let's say a column value is dependent on another column value in those specific cases uh, we help data set owners write custom logic which is then plugged into offline purger and then it runs as part of offline purger itself for that data set okay let's say the user doesn't want data restatement and they go with limited retention in this case we don't need lookup table and all it's very easy we just go ahead and delete everything that is older than 30 days both of these pipelines and there are a few more manual purges purger pipelines also all of these pipelines they emit kafka events uh, for monitoring purpose and a real time dashboard is created showing uh, status of each of the data sets at all time and if there is a failure if there is a leak that is detected uh, appropriate action is taken okay uh, so this was the hard deletion that we talked about let's talk about an interesting use case where hard deletion is not necessary uh let's say uh, a user doesn't uh, at linkedin we pro uh, provide an option to user to you know uh, to not have their uh, data be used in ads targeting so in this case we won't be actually deleting their data but the ads targeting pipeline will not be able to access it so what we do is at run time in the dali reader we inject our compliance library so dali readers comes in handy here again because uh, it is acting as an abstraction layer and we can also use it to filter out data uh, the compliance library, library architecture is here is exactly same as the previous one but instead of you know running it as a batch job we run it dynamically in real time for that data set we filter out the we filter out the uh, non compliant uh, rows and then we rows or tr column transformation based on, on the user requirement and we give the user the results so this is this was one interesting use case next let's talk about some of the challenges that we face that we have faced in past uh, the first one is uh, which is very important comprehensive coverage of data so in offline data it's a bit tricky because we have semi structured data we have unstructured data many file formats and many table formats also like iceberg hive managing them so uh, it's it's very important that each of uh, all of the data that is that resides there in some way it is compliant either it is deleted within 30 uh, after 30 days or it is re uh, the restatement is done or manual purging it is done so all of this is collated in a re real time dashboard which shows status of all the data sets and if uh, we find a leak again we if there is an annotation missing let's say or if there is a problem in any of the pipelines appropriate action is taken tickets are raised immediately Uh, the second thing the second challenge we have faced is data scale 
so currently we are at exabyte level already and we are doubling each year so it's very difficult to maintain you know gdpr slas with you know ever growing data so uh, what we have done is we have uh, uh, we have auto scale model uh, for uh, resources but then it comes with you know big cost on compute but that's what we are doing we are uh, auto scaling our resources we have uh, splitted jobs also sometimes in past but the yeah, auto scale scaling has worked well for us uh the third thing is purging of data set without schema so with schema it is easier that like we have saw we have seen in, uh, like we can identify metadata in data hub and it, it takes care of a lot of things but without schema it's very difficult for us because we have to parse the entire files and then figure out the confidential data and do it but we do it for a uh, specific data sets so that they are compliant the fourth one is violations so even with all of this in place we can have violations uh, like for example if a confidential id is buried deep inside a column which is marked as log let's say and even data set owner is sometimes not you know aware so they have not uh, annotated it properly so for that we have few pipelines in place like sampling classifier etc which randomly you know picks up data sets and then run classifiers on them so that like it is uh, and it, it checks basically whether like there is any uh, confidential data in that so these are some of the challenges we have faced uh there are more but like uh, let's move on okay so these are some of the uh, references of the tech stack that we talked about uh this goblin data hub askeban dali uh that we use in our pipeline uh anybody can these are open source tech stack anybody can use it to build a similar you know data deletion pipeline architecture uh thank you all uh, that's it from my side thanks for joining yeah that was a really great session thank you bhupendra and somya uh we have one question from swapnil uh he's asking when you're talking about linkedin data that should be deleted within 30 days which user data are you talking about so he's asking for some examples of the type of user data yeah uh, can you hear me yeah 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 so uh, okay so this particular use case example was you know uh, the when a linkedin member closes the account uh, all of the uh, all of the linkedin i mean all of his data his or her data right so you uh, in terms of in your profile you would have given your some some of the data and then as you are exploring doing search on the linkedin platform there might be some more data as part of the tracking events which would have been collected by linkedin platform right so when we say within 30 days the data has to be deleted that means all of this data has to be deleted from uh, all the storage so in this particular uh, today's talk we focused only on the offline only a subset of offline uh, storage but then uh, it has to be deleted from all over the uh, places like the online nearline or wherever the uh, you know this data exists so it's it's all yeah 